I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. We're going for a drive. Twenty twenty two Jeep Grand Wagoneer without launch control. Not bad. That's a lot of power. Horsepower and torque. 471 horsepower, 455 pound-feet of torque from a 6.4 liter V8. So this is an all new SUV bringing back a throwback name from Jeep. What are the competitors for the Grand Wagoneer? The main ones would be the Cadillac Escalade and the Lincoln Navigator and also kind of the BMW X7 and the Mercedes GLS. So what you're saying is this is kind of luxurious. Oh, this is quite luxurious. And what is the starting price of this thing? In US dollars, it's $88,995. And if you're shopping for a new Jeep, click the True Car link in the top right corner to get discounted price offers. So let's start off with the looks because that's the most striking thing of this because it is a throwback to the old Wagoneer, which was the Woody Wagoneer from Breaking Bad. Yeah, so the first thing that sucks about the design is that it's not a Woody. It's, come on guys, if you're gonna bring the name back, make it a Woody. I think I saw some renderings of that. Yeah, it I saw it. Cool. It looked really good. So starting with the front end, we do have a little bit of throwback where the hood kind of goes up around the grill and in the Grand Wagoneer, it says that in the chrome part where a regular Wagoneer will have the letters on the hood. And the grill angles forward, which is a heritage thing, and they also look different from each other. So from the front, do you like the looks of this more than the Grand Cherokee L? Yeah, significantly more. Like th this is what the Grand Cherokee L should have been, I think. Okay, now moving on to the side view, we've got a very, I guess, debatable look that people like or not like because of the chrome little swoops that come around all the windows. Yeah, so there is a obsidian version which blacks everything out. I, I do think it looks really good. The chrome kind of works on this. It's a little bit weird looking, but I kind of like that now because it's very different from every other SUV. It, it gives it like a throwback 60s styling, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure, especially once we move around to the back. But sticking to the side, I really like these wheels as well. Yeah, it's a pretty cool, pretty chill, multi-spoke design, but what would be the Continental recommended tire for the Jeep Grand Wagoneer? That would be the Cross Contact LX25. Back to the side body lines and everything, this is two-tone. Two-tone comes standard on the Grand Wagoneers. And I love how they made the two-tone part into the door. It's not just the roof. So when you open it up, you can see, and I think that adds a lot of different two-toneness than the usual two-toners. Yeah, and I'm not too into this burgundy color. The last couple Stellantis vehicles that we've driven have all been this color. I think it looks pretty good in like silver and white as well. As long as you've got the black roof. And now moving on to the back, we continue that chrome theme where it kind of comes down. Like the window actually looks a little bit small from outside. But in here, you know, you got a lot of visibility. I think the looks look fantastic. Yeah, I, I really like the back end. I love the Grand Wagoneer lettering. They made it huge. And the fact that it's like copper on the side of the letters. It's like, it's like angled coming out. It's really impressive. And the taillights look pretty cool. I, I really like the look of this. And we have sequential taillights and sequential turn signals, which is very awesome. And then it's also black at the bottom to match the top. And those are your side steps that come out when you open the door. And then our exhaust at the back is just two exhausts dumped out the bottom. We don't have any fancy tips or anything which is nice because that means they didn't do fake tips right but we do have some very lovely sounds coming from those two exhaust tips from this 6.4 liter v8 so let's take a listen to the outside that's a hammy yeah now floor it for me inside Yuri. muscular but like really toned down and it's quiet. a luxury muscle yeah so looks wise, this compared to the Escalade and the Navigator, did they do a good job of like sneaking Jeep into a luxury car segment? I think they did. I don't think it looks the best, but I think it looks the most different, which I, I really do like. I think the Cadillac Escalade like absolutely nailed it. Okay. Escalade and Navigator have better and like more striking front ends where this has a better and more striking everything else but the front ends. Yes, I, I would agree with that. And then X7 or GLS? Mm, I think the X7 looks really, really good, yeah. <laughs> like really good. And to tie in the luxury from the outside to the luxury on the inside, if we look at the general looks of this interior, we've got this amazing walnut wood, and then we've got really nice leather everywhere. A lot of piano black, but this is a very expensive luxury SUV, so it, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, it kind of does. I'm still not a big fan of it. It is literally basically everywhere, but the materials in here are very nice. Like even the vents, the finishes on the vents, yes, they are gloss, certain parts of it are gloss black, but this copper, amazing. Yeah, and then we can get it in a whole bunch of different colors as well. Like some of the lighter colors may look nicer to you. And then there are some like cool different wood patterns you can get in there and like metal patterns. 
And since I'm on the passenger side, I do really like seeing this Grand Wagoneer in front of me. And I actually do have a passenger screen in front of me as well, which Yuri can't actually see because of the way they designed the screen for driver safety. Yeah, it's got one of those privacy films on it. And while we're on the screen, I can actually input directions and things. I can actually watch Netflix, which we'll get to later. And I can send those directions to the main screen from this passenger screen. I think this is one of the best implementations of something like this from any manufacturer ever. They actually did something better than every other manufacturer so far with screens in the back, and that is having Amazon Fire TV for auto back there, which means you can watch Netflix, YouTube, Disney Plus, all that stuff. You have remotes with hard buttons for everything, and you can mirror your iPhone by plugging into an HDMI, but if you have an Android, you can just mirror it wirelessly. Yeah, it's a really, really good system. Like, definitely the best that we've ever seen. Like, this is the first, Yuri has been complaining that he wants Netflix in a car. We have Netflix in a car, and it's not laggy or anything. Like, everything works as it should. You do need to connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot. This is a pre-production model, so we can't actually connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot, but when you buy one of these, it will have that. And like I said earlier, you can't actually watch Netflix on the passenger side and the driver can't see it. So yeah. you can actually watch it in the front and the passengers in the back can also watch Netflix. It, it's awesome. Okay, let's get you behind the wheel, talk about the rest of the interior, infotainment, power, handling. Let's and I, do it. And I guess that's pretty much our normal review. <laughs> that, that's a car review. Since you brake boosted it, I'm just gonna floor it. <laughs> That was surprisingly better. Because this thing's gigantic. So we do have a ZF 8-speed auto. It is really good, really smooth, but not as smooth as like a Mercedes or something like that. It's it's very nice though. This thing needs a Hellcat motor. Yeah, kind of does. But this is definitely the appropriate amount of power for this. It's way better than that Jeep Grand Cherokee L with that V6. So very just floor it. Very appropriate. Yeah, this, this is great. And it sounds good. Like put a little exhaust on here, throw some valves on it, this, this is great. But how's the gas mileage, Jacob? Uh, 15 miles per gallon, quite terrible, worse than its competitors in the Escalade and the Navigator. And if you guys haven't noticed, uh, we're actually on a bit of a press event right now, so we're filming in a different location, but we did film through Cliche Corner earlier. Handling-wise, this is not very good. Like, keeping it between the lanes on Cliche Corner was actually difficult. I did turn off the traction, one traction, and it just, it cut power constantly. You need to stove it in and then like off the gas and then just floor it straight and then just do your turn and then floor it again. This is not a handling SUV, but this air suspension is remarkable. It is so comfortable. The only thing I think it's missing is a comfort mode. Yes, we have auto, we have sport, we have a bunch of different drive modes, but it's missing comfort. Like I wish there was comfort and comfort plus like an Alpina. It needs a show mode so when you park, you can dump it extra, extra low, which it does not have. Yeah, because it does have parking entry exit mode, but it's not as low as we'd like it. Ooh, train track test. My no, train tracks. Exactly, that was, that was really good. And you can independently control the air suspension, the ride height with its own little dial, which is really nice. You can raise it up to 10 inches, which is apparently best in class. And I guess it makes sense because the old Grand Wagoneer was kind of like one of the first SUVs for going off-roading. Right, they called it a UV because it wasn't exactly sporty. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. And this is a four x four. We do have four wheel drive low. We do have an electronic limited slip differential in the back. So overall, it's a really good system. I'm sure it'll be totally fine in the winter. Obviously no issue today other than for handling. It's just, it's not the best system for handling. Like I, I need to stress that out. But you know what it is good at handling? Radar cruise and lane keep. Yes, so that is one of the best systems on the market. We really like this system because you just have to tap the steering wheel with your fingers and it lane centers you like very well. Yeah, once it detects something, it's pretty much the exact same from the Maserati and the newer Alfa Romeos. Yeah, very good. And these gauges are pretty much identical to the ones we had in the Cherokee L. We do have the optional night vision, which we've been using during the day to see hot exhaust. It's a pretty cool system. It's just silly. Yeah. And you can look at some really hot exhaust while you're towing because this can actually tow up to 9,850 pounds. But if you get the regular Wagoneer with the smaller V8 engine, you can actually tow 10,000 pounds. And that is because the weight of the engine. Interesting. Yeah, very different. So moving back into the interior, how is the seat comfort for you, Jacob? It's pretty good, but there's still like a lot of things kind of poking my back. Not the most comfortable seats, even though they are extremely customizable. Yeah, we find that the more customizable it is, the more things you have pushing into your back the wrong way. But we do have massage in here. You can click the button on the side here to adjust everything and to get your massage started. And then we've got this screen that can pop up from the bottom where you can adjust all your massages. And it is very, very fast. Like going through these animations is probably faster than any car 
manufacturer I've seen so far. Yeah, and this is a very Range Rover, but the ability to hide that screen, if you're into hiding things in your car, it's very good. That, that's like the, Cadillac style. Yeah, exactly. My favorite massage mode is rock climb, just because of the name. Moving slightly above that still interior stuff, our engine start stop button is probably the coolest one ever because it sticks out and has cool leather wrapping around it. Yeah, that's it's kind of unbelievable it has leather wrapping around it. To the left of that, your steering wheel. Yeah, it's uh, two spoke. It looks kind of cool. I do like the wood grain on it. I love seeing the Grand Wagoneer on here. Don't like the gloss black buttons, but overall it's pretty decent. Yeah, it's kind of two spoke just like the old Grand Wagoneer. Yeah, and then we have our infotainment here, which does have some buttons on the side. Luckily, we do have an actual volume and tuning knob and our heated and cooled seats and heated steering wheel are on the side as well. Yeah, it's all capacitive, which isn't our favorite and piano black, which isn't our favorite, but then we've got a bunch of hard buttons for climate, which are all panel black, which are our favorite, but at least they're hard buttons. Yeah, and then the infotainment is actually pretty good. Uh, it's not laggy at all. We have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. The screen resolution is amazing. We do have a front and 360 camera as well, obviously a reverse camera. It's, it's very good. Then below that, we got a couple more capacitive touch buttons, like your traction, your lane keep and stuff like that, your screen moving and your auto park. You get used to it, it's okay. Yeah, and then our shifters are uh, dial down here, which again, you get used to. But it looks cool. It does. It it's not a, cool. it's not a crystal shifter though. <laughs> and then we also have ambient lighting in here that pops out, but it's light outside, so I haven't seen it yet, but from the presentation, it looks pretty cool. And let's talk about the second and third row because apparently these are best in class leg room and I would actually believe it because I am so comfortable in both rows at six foot one and a half. Yeah, very comfortable. We've got peasant blockers in the middle row. We've got huge sunroofs and everything. It's very nice back there. I would not mind doing a road trip back there like as an adult in the back. This would be a great airport shuttle. Oh my God, yeah. And it is two captain's chairs in the middle row, but you can option a bench if you'd like. And to fold the captain chair down to get to the back row is super easy and there's so much room to get to the back, which is rare for a lot of three rows. Yeah, and then you can fold the back seats back there. There's a ton of room in here. Because this is an event, we didn't actually bring our boxes. Sorry about that, but there's so much room back there. But with all the seats up, you don't get as much room behind you as you would in those special like Yukons that are the XLTs, I think. Yes, the, the extended versions. Yeah. So. It doesn't compete with those ones, but the, it's a good amount of room. It'd be crazy for box test. I, if I crash my car through some boxes, will you guys subscribe? I think they would. <laughs> 5,000. 5,000. 5,000. Yeah. 5,000. 5, Thank you. Keep <laughs> subscribing for more explosions and boxes. This is actually on the same platform as the Ram 1500, which is very interesting. Oh, that's wild. Yo, how about the visors? Are they on the same platform? I don't, I don't know. Three, two, one. Yo, good job. Full pass. And we can fit cups in our cup holders here, which have a lot of cool little compartments. And my favorite ones are the phone holders on the side because they actually fit my iPhone perfectly. The 12 Pro Max, which fits nowhere. Okay, check this out. We can slide this little thing here in the walnut wood. And if we lift this up, we got a freezer fridge down there that's like legit. Yeah, this is the first time we've seen condensation and actual ice. Very, very cold. But the one in the middle row doesn't have a fridge, just has a ton of compartments. And we got a cool screen here to control the infotainment. I am surprised that they transitioned Jeep to a luxury brand so well. So am I. Uh, yeah, like they've done such a good it's, job. It's American luxury. Right, exactly. But like a lot of things they've actually done better than the Escalade and the Navigator. Not everything, but a lot of things. And then this also does have a Macintosh sound system. Macintosh. <laughs> which sounds really good. Um, I, I guess we didn't really know much about it before. And it seems like it's showing up in a lot of the Jeeps now and it is pretty solid every single time. Yeah, and this is an upgraded system compared to the one that we had in the Grand Cherokee L. And then this also does have the camera on the inside that you could see all four seats, five seats, eight seats. This one, this one's got seven. Seven. You can have eight if you have the bench, but yeah. it's cool. I really like seeing that even though the stuff shows upside down because you can see even kids in the front on reverse facing child seats. So is that pretty much everything out of the way with this Grand Wagoneer? That would be everything except the price. Let's get to the price. This one starts at $100,995. Canadian. And this one is $120,995. Well, it's competing with the Escalade. It's competing with the Navigator. It kind of has to be. Yeah, except those are Lincoln and Cadillac, which kind of makes sense in my head, but hearing Jeep with that price is kind of crazy. Yes, it's not a track hawk. <laughs> but like Dodge and Chrysler are the Ford and Chevy. Jeep, I think, is now going to become the Lincoln and the Cadillac. Yeah, I think you're right. Except also still the Jeep. Yes, they're positioning it very interestingly. <laughs> so would you take this over an Escalade or a Navigator? Because I think I would tie this with the Escalade and I wouldn't even consider the Navigator. This and the Escalade is really hard to make up my mind because I really like the looks of the Cadillac, but this is just like 
new and impressive in here. But if I prioritize the middle seat technology, I would pretty much have to go this. And if I wanted like the more hipster, cool, then people wouldn't expect choice. This is no brainer. Yeah, and I do like this 6.4 liter V8 even more than I like that 6.2 that's in the Escalade. But then this has that really good lane keep. Yes, but we've never tried Cadillac Super Cruise yet, which apparently is a very good system. Apparently, we'll get there one day. And if you're shopping for a new Jeep and you live in the United States, click the True Car link below. There's a discount when using the Straight Pipes link. You can also shop for used Jeeps using True Car. And if you live in Canada, there's a Car Help Canada link below. So let us know what you guys think of this all new Jeep. Should they have brought this back with wood paneling? I think the answer is obviously yes. And does this compete close enough to the X7 and the GLS or should it stick to the Cadillac and the Lincoln?